Some of Christ's last words were said to be, Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christians call it the Great Commission, and it's a major inspiration for their evangelism. Now, I'll sidestep the issue of why omnipotent Yahweh needs to act by human proxy to get his message out, because I made a video about that already, and I'll go to the, straight to this issue that I think is a really absurd oversight in this whole plan that the allegedly omniscient, omnipresent Christian God has cooked up. If you have the message that you want to get to all of mankind, why set it up so that it will only reach a small section of the world? I mean, it's so stupid. I mean, look, look at the first century Christians, right? They set up churches throughout the Mediterranean, Ethiopia, and maybe even as far away as the Indian subcontinent. That's a controversial one, but there's some evidence that they may have gotten all the way to India. To the first century Christians, that must have seemed pretty impressive. To them, it must have seemed like they were making good progress, and that the whole world would be evangelized well before Christ's return, which they probably expected to be in their lifetime. But you and I know how big the world really is, and one would assume that an all-knowing being would also know how, how big the world is. I mean, why have this magic, earthquake-causing, temple-desecrating, zombie-raising crucifixion of cosmic importance in a relatively isolated part of the Roman Empire where it might go unnoticed by much of humanity? Why not in Greece or Italy where people are writing things down and going to basically everyone's literate in those areas? And that would be a place where you'd think it would get a lot of attention and create a rush of new converts to the religion. Hell, why not supernaturally broadcast it to the rest of the world magically? And I mean, even if we do settle on Judea as the necessary place for the Easter story, and we get the early church making converts left and right with their magic apostolic powers just like it was described in Acts, what good does that do for most of humanity? Even if the apostles are telling everyone about Jesus, what about the many people who were alive in the first century who would never hear it? For example, a Chumash man, a Chumash man who lives in, let's say, first century California. He has no chance whatsoever of knowing about the events in Judea or of hearing the so-called good news and will die in ignorance. Well, according to the Mormons, a magic zombie Jesus made a detour to North America before zipping off to heaven. You know, he came across the Atlantic to talk to the Hebrews who had arrived here centuries earlier. The Nephites, the Lamanites, you know, these people who built cities, founded civilizations, and had huge wars that left absolutely no evidence for archaeologists and historians to uncover. Anyway, so maybe I should give that to the Mormons. So they, they say Jesus came to the Americas. But, I mean, even if we do give that to the Mormons, we just have to shift the geography, and the same issue pops up again. I could say, what about the person living in central Australia in the first century? Or a farmer in Han, China? Or somebody who lives on the, in the Kalahari Desert in Africa? There's no way they would be able to hear this message of Jesus and all the all-knowing God of the universe should know that. Of course, I guess you could go to the kind of five-point Calvinist school of theology and say that all of the quote and unquote elect in the first century lived in the area around the Mediterranean, which is pretty darn convenient, but I'm going to operate from the same assumption I had as a born-again Christian, that the Christian God desires that none should perish, but that all should be called to repentance. And if that's the case, well, that's a pretty piss-poor distribution plan, especially considering that it's a whole gray area among Christians as to whether Yahweh fries the ignorant natives who have never heard about Jesus. I'm serious. Very biblically literate Christians spend quite a bit of brain power debating this issue. And basically, it's it's a kind of an area that you'd think that the God of the universe would have thought to cover. Oh, well. This is just a thought. And as always, I guess I'll just end with saying answer the questions by questioning the answers.